Good evening everyone, this is Dina and today is Thursday, August 31st. I've been stitching for a couple of days on this rotation and I'm ready to uh, put it away for just a little bit and do a new start on a secret stitch tomorrow. I will be starting a stitch along with Diane Estes from Texas. Um, but I am doing my stitch as part of a gift. So it is the fourth part of my secret stitch, and I'll be posting my pictures of that uh, on the Facebook groups because I can't put it in my video until it's been gifted. But this rotation has been on the sow that's going on with Nantucket Rose. So this will just remind you of the Nantucket Rose piece, and I'll show you where I got to uh, on this rotation. Now, I'll show you where I am at the end of this evening. I ran out of room. <laughs> I even had to park a couple of threads because I ran out of room. I had gotten to about right here and had done a little bit across here, but not much. So in the last couple of days, I have come all the way across here and down. I've done all of this under here because none of that was done. And I have one more color to put in here and I will be solid to this row here. And then I can um, continue to work on over and around. So looking at the picture of where I am, I'm about halfway, just about halfway, because this part right here is right here. So I'm almost I'm sitting right here about halfway across that tree. So I'm really happy about that. And I think the shading on mine is turning out beautifully. Um, I'm very happy with it, not having any trouble with that at all. So, doing well. Loving it on the gray. I think that looks pretty. But I'm going to be putting it away now for a few days so I can stitch on my next thing. And I will um, check in with you again later. I'll post this in the um, Sal as well. And I want to talk to you about that um, because I found out some things this week. Um, I had a uh, member of our Sal group contact me this week to let me know that every time she's tried to post into the event, it goes to admin for approval. Apparently that's me because I set up the thing. And we had worked on it between she and I. I tried making a, edits and adjustments to how it was set up and had her test it again. And basically, I couldn't get it to quit coming for approval. And I checked with my husband to see if he had any ideas. And he said he thinks it's because it's tied to my Facebook group and on my, my personal Facebook. And um, because I don't have a separate account for cross-stitch. So because I have a privacy setting on my personal Facebook page that doesn't let some anyone post just anything they want to, it has to have my approval before it goes out there. Um, apparently that is overriding the fact that I set up this sale to say that I didn't want approval. So I have had to go back in for now and just set up a, a notification to let me know every time someone's posting in the group so I can go immediately and approve the posting so it can get out there. I am so sorry for this delay in, in getting your things posted. I did not know that was going to happen. I didn't realize it was going to go back and look at my personal Facebook settings um, because I just, first time I've ever set up an event, I'll just be approving everything I, I see uh, come through as quickly as I can. So good night. It's a fairly late evening here as I finish my rotation and I have to get ready for my start tomorrow. And um, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.
Hey everyone, this is Dina, and today is Monday, September the 4th. I have an update for you on a whip that I've been working on over the weekend and over this holiday. And then I have a tiny, tiny piece of a uh, haul that I want to share with you. So let's start with the whip. You haven't seen this one in a while. This is Ashley's Roses. And the last time that I started her, I had her part of her sash bodice, her bodice and her arm and face completed without the back stitching, of course. And I was about to start on her hair. So my goal, my little short-term goal for this um, rotation was to finish her hair and to try to um, backstitch her face so that she actually would be a, a, like a person that I was uh, doing a picture of. And I'm happy to say that I did that. So this is Ashley's Roses with her face backstitched and her hair completed. And now, as you can tell, I've started doing the little wisp of all the ribbon and flowers that are, you can see here, that go out behind her head. That's what I've started working on here. So I'm gonna have to move her. I'm gonna have to move her out of her Q-snap and um, put her in a different, uh, direction I'll probably do my cue snap across here so I can get the whole width of the top and that way I can do the ribbon out the back of her hair and then I can start going on up and doing the canopy of the flowers and all that she's picking. I've decided to work my way all the way to the top and finish that because the bottom portion is the much heavier portion of stitching with that big skirt. So I'm going to finish those little wisps at the top first before I move downward. So for my next short-term goal, I think what I will try to concentrate on is to get at least the things in the back of her hair done that go out behind her head and then possibly complete all the green vines at the top. I may wait and save some of that pink for the next rotation but I'm very pleased with how far I got this time on just a couple of days work and uh, I think she's going to be beautiful when she's finished and I don't think she's going to take terribly long you know just a few months maybe uh, if I get a chance to work on her at all <laughs> so that's Ashley's Roses now recently I showed you um, I believe I showed you a pattern that I purchased while I was at the retreat and I mentioned that I didn't um, get the threads there because the silks were something that um, weren't stopped by Katrina and I may have shown you the silks when they came in but I thought what I'd like to do today be is show you the whole project because I now have the fabric and I think it just makes everything come to life. So I want to show you the fabric. I got this. This is a Lugana. I love Lugana. And this is a 28 count Lugana. And it is, um, let's see, um, picture this plus. And it's in the colorway of Bashful. And that looks white but it's not it is a pale pale pink and I don't know if I can get it into there you go maybe that would show up a little better but it is just the palest of pinks and what I'm going to be doing on on it is this beautiful heart called simply love it's a Glendon place pattern so what I wanted to do, if you'll bear with me for just a second, and let me pop that open. I wanted to show you the whole thing together. Here's the fabric, this pale pink. And then I wanted to share with you the colors that are gonna go in it. And I'll just try to grab one of each because I have multiples. 
and um, there are beads as well that I think I may have shown you before but I just wanted to be able to show it to you on the fabric isn't that beautiful just beautiful um, the beads of course are purple and then they're light blue, pink, and white. So I'm going to see if I can hold these up together so you can see them all. They're on this pink fabric again. There's the beads. And here's the whole project. Isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely beautiful. I can't wait. I <laughs> just can't wait to get started. So you may see this as a new start very quickly because it is, after all, a Valentine piece. And it is, you know, something I would love to get started before Valentine's Day so I could see some progress on it, you know, as I go. But it is now finally kitted up. So that's the biggest piece, is that it's kitted up. And now I can get started on it. Forgot to show you this. This is a little treasure that goes on it as well. So I'm real happy about that. It's all here. I can get it going soon. <laughs> so I'll be doing that. So that I'm pretty excited about. I've also worked in the last few days a little bit on a secret stitch that is a birthday present and I've been showing it in um, my uh, Facebook groups um, so that's where you can see it in some of those cross stitch uh, finish line or cross stitch um, stitch mania those are the two I mainly uh, participate in, and um, I think you will uh, like it if you get a chance to see that. I am filming it as I go, as I make uh, steps along the way to finish. It is a four-part stitch, so there are four separate pieces to it. And I am now stitching on four of four, so I'm on the last one, and I um, think I've decided how I'm going to finish it. I've had two or three different ideas in mind. I've, I've explored two or three. I've actually bought uh, pieces and parts to do one or the other and then decided that wasn't the way I wanted to highlight it. And so now I think I've got what I'm going to do. And um, I can uh, just let you know that that is uh, thanks mainly to watching uh, Chelsea and Priscilla because seeing all the wonderful finishes that they've been doing has really helped me to come up with how I want to, to finish that piece. So thank you ladies for sharing your finishes on your channel because I'm, I'm getting so much out of it and I'm enjoying the two of you very much. Um, so that's my report for today. I hope you had a fabulous Labor Day. Uh, we, had, uh, we did travel a bit and we had a good trip, so we had safely returned home now, and things can get back to normal. So happy stitching to you, and I will talk to you later. Bye. Hello, everyone. This is Dina, and today is Tuesday, September the 12th. I am so happy to be filming today. We have just come through <laughs> uh, the hurricane. Um, hurricane M Irma has just made its way through here yesterday. And it was a little uh, intense. <laughs> the wind was uh, quite 
heavy and there were some tree limbs that uh, came down in our side of our yard but didn't hit the house and they were small uh, limbs so we were very fortunate there were others in our community that lost larger limbs and um, in fact one of our neighbors is was trapped in her driveway um, this morning until they could uh, cut the huge tree down to pieces and pull it away. In fact, I was just checking on them a few minutes ago and they had their tractor out there <laughs> trying to pull it out of the driveway and the pieces that they've cut so far. It was a large tree. Fortunately, it did not hit their house. So that's good. I hope if you had damage that you are recovering quickly, that you have help, and that you can get your home back in order as soon as possible. And um, I hope that everybody is safe and sound. So I know we're bracing to see what happens with Jose next. So we'll kind of stay tuned for that. But thank you. There were several of you that checked on me during the storm yesterday. You knew it was coming up through the middle of Georgia, and you know I live in the center of Georgia. But I'm so grateful that it had downgraded to a tropical storm by the time it got here. So we were able to weather that pretty well. Now, for stitching um, today, I want to give you an update on the piece that I'm working so hard to try to finish. And that is the cute little witch bewitching. That's what she's supposed to look like there. And now I'll show you where I've gotten to. I have spent <clears throat> double the time on this piece that I normally would in a month and um, I intend to spend even more because I'm so pleased with the progress that I am going to try to push to finish it by Halloween. I may not be able to get it framed by Halloween. Probably not <laughs> because that doesn't just involve me. But um, I would love to finish the stitching by Halloween and so I'll show you where I've gotten to on her and this is I have to come back here so you can see the whole piece and then I'll come in a little bit closer this is the full length of the piece now so we have both width and length so you can see the placement on the fabric the pumpkin is the bottom of the pattern and the rest of that space where the face looks like it's cut half off that's her dress and so her now her dress will go just a few stitches below the edge of the pumpkin where it's laid on the floor but for the most part um, that's all that's left now is the rest of the purpley green and orange on her dress and then the rest of this blue cloak and I can show you, I've started the curve in the cloak. You can see where it's starting to come across there. It'll meet before I know it. And I've been working my way down over here and over here. So I've gotten all the way down to the bottom with the pumpkin. Then I started on the dress and I've brought it considerably further down in the purples and oranges and green. And then I started on the cloak and I brought it further down. So the last piece to go back to and bring it down is this one. And that's what I'll be working on uh, today after I, after I do this update. I wanted to go ahead and get an update uh, together for you and get it up there and get it loaded because um, even though it's only the 12th, I'll probably be, be stitching on this all the way through the 15th. And I have um, some time constraints uh, at the end of the week, so I figured I'd just go ahead and, and do this update today and add it to a couple of updates that I have taken and um, just let you have a shorter video today, just so you kind of see where I am on the projects that I've been working on. It will seem a bit short this time because I have spent quite a bit of time on my secret stitch. It is a Christmas present and I do have to fully finish it and I am delighted to say I'm on the fourth part of a four-part present and I am halfway done with the fourth part so I have one half of this last one left to do and it's just September the 12th so I think I'm in good shape for that 
But considering I have two pieces that I'm pushing toward a finish, I'm not spending a lot of time on my other whips. And that's okay, that's by choice. I want to get these two finished, if at all possible, at least one of them by the end of September, which would probably be the smaller one, the gift one. Um, and then that would give me the month of October, hopefully to finish this before Hall before Halloween. I would love to do that. That's that's sort of my, uh, what we would call, in, when I used to work, we, we had a, a goal and then we had a stretch goal, <laughs> which is if you could really do something, this is what you would do. So this is my stretch goal is to get this one done by Halloween. Um, and. And then if not, at least by the end of the year, that, that would be easy. I know I can do that now because I've put time in it and I'm seeing it really move along. Um, but I'm getting um, very antsy to do a new start. I, I've already kind of showed it to you earlier in this segment. And, um, you know, so I want to get at least one of these two finished so I can get that new start in uh, pretty quickly. And then I think I'll be evaluating what I want to stitch on next year. I have, if I finish this, I will only have uh, three um, pieces that are a uh, year of whips that I'll be carrying over. And I will have two additional uh, whips that I'll carry into the new year, that being Ashley's Roses and Nantucket Rose. And they're all sort of similar. They're either uh, a Mirabilia or a Lavender and Lace. Every one of them. And I'm trying to get my rotation down to only having one of those uh, types of pieces in my rotation at a time. Maybe two. Um, but as I had kind of said a few months back when I had you help me pick what my next new starts would be, I had four categories that I wanted to have a start in. and those are the categories I'd like to carry forward in part of my year next year. I also have some series that I want to do. I've got the uh, hometown holidays that I want to get started. And I have a beautiful autumn piece that I want to start, possibly for an autumn sale. So I may have to put the Valentine piece off a little bit because I want to start the autumn piece for that. So a lot of stuff I want to do. And as I think about it, my thoughts are shifting and I'm trying to uh, let everything swirl around until I have a really good solid plan form in my head. So I'm just focusing right now on short term. And short term is trying to finish my secret stitch and trying to finish this bewitching. So I think I'm making good progress on her. I only, I don't just have to finish stitching. She is loaded with beads. And so I, uh, I hope that uh, that you like her as much as I do. Um, you can see a lot of the swirls are showing up in there, but there are still uh, these little beautiful star patterns where there are four beads. Like right here, you can see it gets that dark blue, that cluster, they're there. They're all over this piece. They're all over her cloak. So <clears throat> I have gotten a good rhythm now with the blending filament. I've gotten the right length that seems to work well and I can get almost to the end before it starts fraying. And as soon as it starts fraying, I know it's time to tie it off and get a new piece. So I've gotten that kind of down to a rhythm. And that's another reason I want to keep working on this because once you get that going and it's going smoothly, then you, you, you don't want to lose that. <laughs> so thanks for visiting with me today and letting me give you an update, not only on what I've been stitching but the fact that uh, we made it safely through the storm. I will tell you, we lost power. We lost power for over five hours. And I was so delighted that I had a couple of these lamps that are battery operated. <laughs> so I stitched. Um, I was able to stitch because I had two battery operated lights. I could put one on my pattern and one over my work and I could see well enough especially during the daylight hours it was fun and then we had power back on mm, about six o'clock last night so that was good because then as it got too dark to really stitch by this I um I was able to continue stitching a little bit after dinner so that worked out well I hope you're having a great time and I will uh, let you get back to stitching and watching other floss tubers 
And I hope that uh, you have a great week. And I will talk to you soon. Hello everyone. I am so sorry to let you all know that one of the winners of my past the stash uh, event for the pattern for the children's garden has never contacted me. And it has been long enough, I feel, um, that we should go ahead and generate a new winner. I've already heard from um, one of the winners Cross Stitch Addict, and I've already sent her pattern to her, and she's already let me know she has received it. So we're just going to draw for the second pattern now, and I'm sorry that um, Trini Ray has never got in touch with me. Um, Trini, I'm sorry, but I feel in the um, good faith I have to move forward and get this pattern distributed so that Paula's pattern is out there being enjoyed uh, as well as mine. So we're gonna draw again. And um, I hope in the future, Trini, that you win something um, additionally. So uh, there were 50 participants and I put the random number generator up here and I've just entered the number 50. And now we will generate a result. And the result is number five. And that is Carmen Escamilla. Carmen, you are the new winner. There you go, if you can read my writing there. Of the Pass the Stash pattern, the Children's Garden. So Carmen, if you will, uh, let me hear from you. I will put my email below in the um, description box. And if you'll contact me with your uh, mailing address, then I can get the pattern in the mail to you. I appreciate it. Congratulations, Carmen. Talk to y'all soon. Bye.